Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Shrimp boats is a common, their sails are inside. Shrimp boats is a common, there's dancing tonight. Why did you hurry? hurry, hurry we are going to um, hurry, hurry, do politics, of course, but I'm going to begin with something from the real life, the real world, something that most talk show hosts don't live in. I can't tell you the politicians live in the real world. I don't know who lives in the real world anymore, but I do. So every morning, I bicycle by a little yacht harbor, and this morning I talked to a sardine fisherman. You say, well, why are you telling me about that? Because I want to tell you about the world through a sardine. I spoke to a young fisherman who was wrapping up his nets. I happen to know the sardines are running because I watched the birds eat them last week on the jetty outside my house. And he told me that this huge school of fish has now gone across San Francisco Bay, and they're over by the Richmond side. So I said, well, where do your sardines go? He said, well, they're trucked up to a freezing plant. They're sent up to Bellingham, Washington, and they're sent to Japan. Not one sardine is sold in America. So they're fished out of my waters. They're sent to Japan. And I said, what, do they take the row out of them and then get rid of the fish? Right. Now, sardines are one of the most healthful foods in the world. I don't mean the stuff in a can with the salt and the oil. Sardines are great foods, rich in omega-3s, etc., high protein. They use this uh, fertilizer or cat food. Would you believe this? This shows you the stupidity of our political system, that our natural resources can be lifted out of our own waters and sold overseas, just as we learned last week that the Chinese, excuse me, the Saudis are buying up the wheat land in the heartland of America. Now, what sane nation on earth permits a hostile nation to buy up its farmland? A nation run by criminals and gangsters. That's all. And that brings us right to the election. Trump, 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 diddy dum 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 Cruise, cruise, cruising with cruise. Yesterday we talked about what is a conservative. Great show. Loved every three, every minute of the three hours. Today I'm going to talk about that and what is a liberal, because many of you don't know what a liberal is. All we hear is liberals bad. Liberals bad. Well, classical liberals were not so bad. It's the phony, well, let's forget the word phony. It has no meaning. It is the modern variety of liberal who are fanatical progressives, meaning socialist, communist, authoritarians, who we are referring to when we say liberal today. Because true liberals had an adage that was, I may not agree with you, but I would fight to the death you write to say it. That, that is so dead. That is so dead. No one came to my aid when I was banned in Britain, so to speak. You say, why do you keep referring to it? Because I'll repeat it over and over again. Name one of the great conservative talk show hosts who spoke out against Britain banning one of their own. One or two did. They're all good conservatives, of course. So what is a liberal? What is a conservative? We're going to talk about Clinton's emails. Clinton's emails so secret some lawmakers can't read them. Did you know that? Did you know that? That's the biggest story of the week, of the entire election. The biggest story, the biggest story is that some of the emails were so secret, so above top secret, that some lawmakers are not allowed to read them. But apparently many others did. And now Clinton is going after the inspector general using her hit machine. Her hit machine is going after the independent inspector general. Can you believe what we are dealing with here? Why is she fit to be president? Why? When she attacks anybody who exposes anything she does. So she's going after inspector general Charles McCulloch. She's now attacking him in a way that you would expect in a banana republic. And if you want a banana republic, make sure that Trump is undermined by his worst enemies. And who are his worst enemies? Well, we know that so-called Hollywood progressives hate him. In fact, I have a list of them. Hold on one minute. Here it is. Jane Fonda organizing a dump Trump campaign. 
Now, how does Jane Fonda differ from those in radio who are attacking him? I mean, Jane Fonda, Harry Belafonte, left-wing filmmakers, including the psychopa psychopathic anti-Israeli Naum Chomsky, are lending their support to the drive to prevent Donald Trump getting into the White House. So you'd expect that from these psycho leftists, right? Then why are people who call themselves conservatives attacking Donald Trump when that will give us Hillary Clinton? On that note, two of the smartest women in the entire world that I know both say it's either Trump or the country's doomed. And they say that those who are attacking Trump are working for the Democrats, knowingly or unknowingly. They may knowingly be on the take of the Democrat Party, and you may not know it. Two of the smartest women in the world have said that to me. And they've both made lives for themselves through very hard work. It's either Trump saves America or we lose America to the most dangerous fanatic in the history of the world, uh, in, the, in the American political world. So far left Jane Fonda is now running a smear campaign against Donald Trump. And they say things like, we believe Trump is a grave threat to democracy, freedom, human rights, equality, and the welfare of our country and all our people, says Jane Fonda. And 1,200 people from Hollywood, including, listen to this, the stinkos from Code Pink are attacking Donald Trump. What more do you need to know? If they're attacking him, he must be the right choice. It's that simple. So they're pushing the hate of Donald Trump to a new level. The hatred of Donald Trump is being pushed to a new level, as we would expect from Jane Fonda and her Hollywood cohorts. But why do you suppose it's coming from sources you've in the past come to trust? Why is that happening? Why is that? Is Ted Cruz such a superb candidate? Let's look at Ted Cruz for one minute. He supported TPP for Bar Barack Obama, Fast Track Authority, Trade Authority for Barack Obama. Now, how could you call that a conservative candidate? How could you call Ted Cruz a conservative? Darling, when he supported Fast Track Authority for President Obama. Now, I don't want to run Cruz down. He's got a lot of deficits. My main thing about Cruz is not even his politics so much as he's unelectable. In a general election, he loses because he cannot garner the vote of the average American. They take one look at him and they see a sneak. That's what they see. i got to tell you over and over again. Just as I bicycle past a yacht harbor and talk to a sardine fisherman to learn, to learn the reality of commerce, at the basic level, I'm a fisherman. I can tell you that my stethoscope is the most accurate in the political world, and Ted Cruz would be destroyed in a general election. Forget how smart he is, forget how good he is, forget all those other issues. It does not matter so much as whether he is electable in a general election, which is sort of like a high school popularity contest, whether you know it or not. Did you know that? The average American votes based upon what they see in the last week before the election. That's all they do. They look at the candidate, don't even know who he is. And that's what it is, make a decision based on popularity. They like his suit, they like his hair, they like his tie, they like his smile. That's about it. And his teeth. I'm sorry to tell you Ted Cruz loses on all of those fronts. Doesn't mean that he's a bad man. He's probably a great guy. I know he's intellectually superb. I don't appreciate him voting for TPP, but I like listening to him. I think he makes good sense. I mean, he says the word Constitution one more time. I'll say, okay, we heard it already. We know what the Constitution is. We all carry one in our pocket like the little red book. I get it. I know in Maoist China you had to carry a little red book to prove you're a loyal member of the Maoist Communist Chinese Party. But in America today, I guess you got to carry a little copy of the Constitution and produce it on, uh, on demand. Or you're excommunicated as a conservative in America. Must carry that Constitution in your back pocket preferably in chest pocket, and produce it on demand in order to get on a subway car, or else you'll be told that you're, a con that you're not a, a conservative. You don't pass the litmus test. That's topic number one. So what is a conservative and what is a liberal? A liberal. What is a liberal? We don't even know what a liberal is anymore. I found a definition of a liberal. It was published by the Huffington Post a number of years ago by a number of left-leaning law professors who have no recognition, so I won't mention their name. And here's one of them. Liberals believe government must respect and affirmatively safeguard the liberty, equality, and dignity of each individual. 
It is liberals who have championed and continue to champion the rights of, get ready, racial, religious, and ethnic minorities, political dissidents, persons accused of crime, and the outcasts of society. It is liberals who have insisted on the right to counsel, a broad application of the right to due process, and the principle of equal protection for all people. Now, that's all very important stuff for those individuals who are minorities or criminals. They all are entitled to representation, but not by overriding the will of the majority and violating the law itself. That's the problem with liberalism as it is practiced in America today. It's not that I oppose the liberty and equality and dignity of each individual. I oppose the fanatics using George Soros' billions of dollars of, I think, ill-gained monies, using the monies of George Soros to buy the newspapers, as in The Godfather, and override the will of the majority. And go on. Liberals believe government has a fundamental responsibility to help those who are less fortunate. Oh, that's very, very benevolent of you. It is liberals who have supported and continue to support robust government programs to improve health care, education, social security, job training, and welfare for the neediest members of society. It is liberals, they write, who maintain that a national community is like a family and that government exists in part to promote the general welfare. That all sounds good to an 18-year-old kid in college. Now, if liberals believe in all of this stuff, how is it that Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and other liberal companies evade taxes and make you foot the bill for their liberalism? I mean, very nice if uh, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and the others who use the triple uh, uh, Irish, triple Dutch methods of paying very, very low taxes... Uh, and make you foot the bill for all of these health care, education, social security, job training and welfare programs for the neediest members of society. And then we read this morning that the owner of one of the most popular yogurt companies in America, Chobani Yogurt, is a Kurdish Muslim refugee immigrant who is, who is lobbying around the clock to bring in as many Middle Easterners as he can to work in his factory. And he's gotten some gigantic companies to go along with him. Did you know any of this? So every time you eat that yogurt, you're buying another, you're br buy, bringing another refugee into America. You didn't know any of that. So I've, I've started this show now talking about sardines, conservatives, liberals, Cruz, Trump, Clinton's emails. I think that's enough for an opening. It's enough for the children to digest at the beginning of the class today. And if you've taken notes and you can't, uh, ask a question or state something, there is a phone number you can call. I am not the New York Times or the Daily News. I actually take calls. And the phone number for your uh, editorial is 855-400-SAVAGE. See, we are the new newspapers. I, I don't say that often enough. I grew up reading newspapers. I read many of them in my house in Queens. My father bought five of them a day. I didn't know why he was buying five. And he used to say to me, because I want to know all sides of a, of a topic. He never went past high school. He was an immigrant. He worked too hard to go to college. He didn't have the money. Dropped out of high school and worked his whole life. Okay. He read five newspapers a day. I can remember them to this day. Daily News, New York Post, the New York Herald Tribune. That was three. I, I don't remember the rest. Honest to God. There were a few others. I don't know who they were. And I said, Dad, why are you reading all these papers? He said, well, one gives you one side. The other gives you the other side. I want to know all the sides before I make up my own mind. So he was a very, very independent-minded man, my father. In that sense, I thank him for that. And then when I got older and I thought I was so smart, I would write letters to the editor, and occasionally they would be published by the uh, New York Times. And boy, would I treasure those editorials. I have them in a file somewhere. How long has it been since you've had a letter published by any newspaper? Like forever? And talk radio now serves as the instant method of communication. Back in a minute. It is the Savage Nation. I mean, I'm going to repeat the topics till I'm blue in the face. I can't do it. <clears throat> We're talking about what is a liberal, what is a conservative. The Cruz-Trump feud. That Jane Fonda has joined other fanatical anti-American leftists.